when we opened for Jethro Tull, we did it for three years, and everybody was warning me about, oh, you know, they're they're old school, and don't be on stage, don't be backstage when they're playing, never get in their way, don't be in the audience at sound check, you know, Ian right. wants a clear room. These Fulton guys were the nicest people, most helpful in our careers. Ian plays flute on two tracks on my albums. Nice. Uh, they, they looked after us just phenomenally, and we'd always be side stage watching them and all the rest of it. And, and Ian Anderson would actually, halfway through the tour, he didn't want to have to be on side stage to introduce us, but he knew that all those people in those theatres were in the fucking bar drinking, not wanting to come in till Tull went on. So right. he, he knew they knew his voice. So he would be at the side of the stage at the mic and go, ladies and gentlemen, this is Ian Anderson of Jethro Tull. <laughs> and coming up now is a band I've discovered, you know, and do this amazing thing. And then eventually he said, in case I can't always be there, he recorded it. And so wow. the, the, the house guy would play this and you would see people rushing into their seats for us. And, you know, he told me himself, he said, that you guys are getting, I'm getting more thank you emails from my fans saying thank you for introducing me to this other band. There was zero negative impact on Jethro Tull. Yeah. Completely confident, expert musicians who saw no reason to fuck us over and actually gave us the lighting guy, gave us the monitor guy to wear our shows we'd never had. Fucking, I'd never done a gig where the spotlights were hitting me, yeah, and stuff like yeah. this with all these guys, you know, being controlled by the lighting guy. Go right. hit the singer, and now guitar, but go left to the point yeah. where we were only doing 40 minutes, but it was the best 40 minutes we'd ever fucking had, right? Sounding every night, and then we had this brilliant, absolutely brilliant t shirt salesman who was working for Tull, but he took a shine to us, absolute cockney Londoner. Wow. And he, he right off the bat, he took a shot. He was I, I, English Irish, you know, uh, Tommy. And he'd say, like, Right, the minute your fucking gig ends, you fucking get out of here. We fucking do the old sign the fucking get who wants it. Get the young dubs to right here. <laughs> sign the fucking CD. And then we'd sign the CD. And then the Tull would come on. Everybody would run back in. He'd go, Right, follow me. I found this fucking boozer up the road. Promised them I'd bring you. Got a couple of free points because I fucking said I'd bring you. So we'd go running up to this pub. The guy would be like, Oh, who the fuck is this? He's like, Young Dublin's fucking opening act for Jethro. Don't worry, I'll have fucking Jethro tell up here afterwards. And so the bartenders, <laughs> bartenders flying out free pints to us, right? And then he'd be looking at his watch and he'd go, Ah, fucking hell, they're on Aqualung. We'd run back down, we'd run in right as do 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 <laughs> right on time. And then the gig would end, we'd go right back out to the table. And now everybody's coming out. And everybody would buy it. I mean, we were making more money selling fucking albums at that show, all because of him. Because That's of great. this amazing but in Europe he was desperate. Like he the, the German fans, Tull fans, would be all dressed up like Aqualog and everything. And they'd all show up and he'd be like, All right, darling, what the fuck did you come as? You know, he had <laughs> he had these amazing and then he'd say stuff like in Germany, he'd stand up in the seat and go, Right, which one of you cunt shot me, granddad? <laughs> <laughs> and then we'd be going, Tommy, stop for fuck's sake. Oh my God. You know, and then he'd get up and think he's like, all right, who's this then? <laughs> I mean, his sense of humor was unbelievable. But wow. Ian found out, he started to check the numbers and he saw that we were selling just like thousands of dollars worth of shit. So he immediately said, call me into his little dressing room one night. And he's like, I hear you're doing amazingly well with the CDs and t-shirts. I said, we are, it's fucking incredible. Thank you so much for this opportunity, you know? And he was like, all right, he goes, I'm going to start bringing my CD out. <laughs> and, and, and because to him coming from that old school world, you mm -hmm. just, there was no, you never met up with the fans afterwards. I mean, maybe you did sure. as, you, as you left the theater back door, there'd be fans that you might sign a few, but that concept of letting them get that close to you. And so the end of the tours, they would, unbelievable shit would happen the last date of each tour we did uh sorry for going off on this fucking tangent, no no it's great this to me is is the coolest shit that ever happened to us where we go on first obviously we're on there and the first tour we finished we're in the middle of a slow song and it's one of a song i will call apart and it's this mm. big heart you know, and the world has left me out you know and all this type of sad stuff all of a sudden yeah. all tull and their entire crew 
river dance across the fucking stage <laughs> behind us, right? And I don't, I, I use the term river dance loosely, obviously. No, 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 no disrespect to the great fucking whatever his name is. Michael but, Flatley. But that's the one. Lord so, of the dance. Yeah, they, so they, but they do this Irish thing across and the crowd just fucking loses it laughing, right? <laughs> and apparently they'd never done it nights before. So then in the middle of their show, they would do this thing where they do one of Ian's solo songs about mm -hmm being in India and never drink tap water or whatever, but that all these little kids would get all the, the plastic bottles from the American tourists right. and they go down to the river and fill them up with the fucking shitty water and recap them and try to sell them. They were just trying to make enough to buy a fucking sandwich. But right. this was this was the whole thing about how you never drink the bottled water even because you don't know. So in the middle of the gig, so they, they would send out their tour manager before the show and he'd pick out some pretty girl you know whoever he could find mm -hmm. and uh which some, some nights didn't work out so well as others and uh <laughs> he'd bring he'd bring the girl back and she'd be put into this indian outfit with this veil over her face halfway over her face and this uh, sitar whatever they call those outfits mm -hmm. and she'd shimmy out on the stage in the middle of this song and he'd be going like and the water is something you know don't touch the water you know playing the flute and she'd come over to each band member and they'd go oh thank you and then <laughs> finally up to ian at the end of it because the shows are very drama you know it's great mm -hmm. it's that old prog rock fucking yeah uh, full-on show so yeah. so this night the, the, i dressed up as the girl and so <laughs> and now i had a full goatee and everything oh, fucking, but this God. veil we made the veil go a bit lower and i'm in this lovely dress you know and so i come sauntering out on stage and everybody was fucking nervous right all his crew were like shit in a brick <laughs> you know he's not known for for this that this kind of carry on so i go over first to martin Barr on guitar you know i go over to him and i sort of look up and I, he goes oh fuck <laughs> and he keeps playing then i go over to don perry up on the the riser drumming away and i i get, look, lift my head up so he sees me and he's like oh fuck <laughs> now they're all nervous too and then i go up to ian and i'm fucking nervous <laughs> i go up to ian and he's like he looks over at me and I do this and he goes and plays the fucking bum note. I don't think the man has ever played a bum note in his life. And oh he my just, God. But then he, he gets back on it and he, and, he, and he smiles at me and I fucking sauntered off. Everybody was just laughing their asses off. That's great, great. But he told me afterwards, he was like, oh, you caught me a little off guard there. And I was like, I'm sorry, man. I had to do something. You fucking did it to us. But it started this routine then where the European tour every tour we finished they would go out of their way to think of shit. one oh. day one day they came out in overalls in the middle of the same <laughs> slow song and started banging nails into the stage <laughs> off tempo you know <laughs> so that we were trying our best to stay and the audiences laughing their ass oh, off.